Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, let's dig into this marble texture. For something that looks so simple, it's actually quite a complex node setup. So we're gonna end up with a couple of groups, mix shader and various other things. So I'm gonna start with the first group. So as always, I've got my object loaded. I'm in the shading tab. I've got viewport shading enabled and a principled shader. A couple of quick changes in this principled shader before we get going with nodes. Metallic's going to point one. Specular tint to point five. Sheen all the way up to one. Clear coat all the way up to one. and everything else will stay the same. Okay, so first up, let's add four color ramps. So we'll just add one to start with, and then Shift D to duplicate these. I'm gonna move this one down and across. Shift those out of the way a bit. Next up, let's add some texture. First with a Voronoi, so I'm pressing Shift A to search for all these, by the way, in case I haven't said. Sometimes forget what I've repeated. And then I want three noise textures. So one and then Shift D to duplicate all those three. I want a mapping node and a texture coordinate. Oops. Right, so we are going to plug the object into the vector of the mapping node. And the vector of the mapping node is going to go into the Vor Vor Voronoi and the first two noise textures. The distance from the Voronoi is going into the first color ramp. The factor from the second uh, first noise texture is going into the second color ramp. And the factor from the third, no, the second noise texture, you see I told you it would get a bit complicated, from the second noise texture is going into the third color ramp. And then the factor from the third noise texture into the fourth color ramp. We're going to take the object from the texture coordinate straight into the vector of the last noise texture. Now we're going to need to mix these two and then mix this with those two. So with the node Wrangler enabled, press shift Control shift, right click on the first color ramp and drag that line down to the second and that will automatically apply a mix shader. We can duplicate that to give us our second, oops, and plonk it in there. Plug that into the base color and change the mix mode to darken and a factor of 0.1. Take the color from the first mix shader into color one of that second one. Oops, seem to have double duplicated there. And you can see some changes happening already. Change the factor here to 0.4 and the mix mode again to darken. Then take the color from the third color ramp into color two of that second mix shader. Now, 
let's make some changes to these color ramps. The white, we're going to change the position to 0 0.075. On this second one, we're going to move the white to about 0.5. In fact, let's make that 0.575. And then the black, we're just going to sort of crunch in a bit. Let's say 0.28. And then for this third color shader, the black is going to go to 0.355. And the white we're going to bring over, let's say 0.68. Now this bottom color ramp actually is going to go into a bump node which gets plugged into the normal of the principal shader. And we take the color from the color ramp into the height of the bump node. Set the strength to 0.1 and leave the color ramp as it is. Okay, let's tackle these textures. On the Voronoi, we're going to change this mode here to distance to edge. And you can see what a big impact that's had. Change the scale to 1.9 and leave the randomness as it is. For the first of the noise textures, we're cranking up the detail to 15, roughness to 0.8, and distortion to 0.5. For the second noise texture, we're going to increase the detail to 10, roughness to 0.8, distortion to 1. And then for this last noise texture, Scale to 20, detail to 20, roughness to 1, and distortion at 0. That's mostly affecting the bump node, which is the texture. Now, to mess this all up, what we're going to do is add a noise texture in between the texture coordinate and the mapping node. So search for the noise texture, drop it in over that line, then add a mix RGB in between that and the mapping node. And you can see it's having a big impact here. Take the object node from the texture coordinate into color 2 of that mix shader and set it to 0.55. For the noise texture itself, change the detail to 10 and leave everything else the same. And you can already see we've got that wonderful veining that you would get with marble. Now, that's our first group. So what I'm going to do is drag a selection box around all of that. And press Control G. That's now placed all of those nodes into a group. And we can use this sort of up arrow here to get back to our main screen. And you can see we're in that main group there. Just for clarity, I'll name it group one. Next up, we need to add a mix shader, mix RGB. Uh, actually, no, it's a mix shader, sorry. Mix shader, there we go. Set that to 
Now we need to start afresh for the gr second group. So we need a principled BSDF as we normally would. That's going to go into the second slot on the shader. And for this, we're going to increase the metallic to 0.1, specular to 1, specular tint to 0.5, sheen to 1, and clear coat to 1. Now we're going to work in a very similar way that we did to the first one. So we're going to add three color ramps. A Voronoi texture. Two noise textures. A mapping node and a texture coordinate node. Oops, not a checker texture, a texture coordinate. Right. Now, again, we need to mix these. This time we're leaving this mode to mix. Changing this first one to 0.35. Bringing in a second and leaving that set at 0.35. Take the color from the first mix shader into color one. Color from the third color ramp into color two, and that gets plugged into the base color of the principal shader. We're going to move the white of the first color ramp to 0 0.07. We're going to change this color, the black color, on the second color ramp to a sort of a blue, like a sky blue. And position it at 0.15. Move the white to 0.85. And change the blend mode to ease. For the last one, we're moving the black to 0.1 leaving the white where it is and leaving the color mode as it is as well. The distance from the Voronoi is going into the first color ramp. The factor, factor from the first noise texture is going into the second color ramp. And the factor from the second noise texture is going into that third color ramp. I hope I've said that all right. Now, for the textures, we're changing the Voronoi to distance to edge and leaving the scale and randomness as they are. For the first noise texture, changing the detail to 10 and leaving the other settings as they are. And for the second noise texture, the detail is going to 10 and the roughness to 0.7, actually just let's say 0.8. Now we're going to get the vector from the mapping node and plug that into all of those textures. And take the object from the texture coordinate into the vector of the mapping node. Now we're going to do again here what we did before and add a noise texture between the coordinate, texture coordinate and the mapping node. We're also going to add a mix RGB 
in between the noise texture and the mapping node and take the object from the texture coordinate into color 2 of that mix shader. Change that to 0.55 and for the noise texture detail to 10 and leave the other settings as they are. Okay, there's nothing else to add on this particular stage, so we're going to select all of those, press Ctrl G to group, and come back out to our main selection. So we've now got our two groups, let's name that two, and we can control the difference between the two using this slider. I think 0.35 might actually be better than 0.25. So what I'm going to do is send that to render. Just a reminder, I am using the cycles render engine and 1024 samples. And there we have our finished marble texture. Now you can get away with just that first group to create this dark veining. However, creating that second group and mixing it gives you all this extra detail, which I think really sort of makes this super special. Okay, anyway, if you've enjoyed the video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Let your mates know. Um, anyone that uses Blender, please let them know as well. Uh, and of course, subscribe to the channel for future content. In the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.